So thank you everyone for joining the webinar this afternoon or this morning, depending on where you are joining from around the world. A little bit in the way of introductions. So my name is Harrison and I'm the client success lead for the UK team here at Tracker. Today, we're going to be exploring marketing and how Tracker can help improve your marketing function. But before we get stuck into that, I think we need to look at data. Now, when you joined the call today or when you signed up for it a couple of days ago or a couple of weeks ago, you probably were imagining fancy marketing campaigns and automated marketing, which don't worry, I've not tricked you. We will be looking into that as well. But good marketing first means good data. So we're going to start the first part of the call by exploring how we capture that good data within Tracker, but then also how we can use existing data and enrich that existing data. Once we have our good data, we're then going to look at how we can send out mass mail shots to our database. And then in the latter part of the call, we're going to look at the automated marketing function that we have built into Tracker. So let's get started. Let me just share the screen for everybody. So for those of you that are lucky enough to be Tracker clients already, this is a Tracker system, so you should be familiar with it. For those of you that aren't Tracker clients and are interested in the platform, this will be a first look. Now, I think we can all agree that marketing is a vital part of any successful company and even more so within the recruitment space. Now, the challenges that we face in today's market are candidate attraction, um, client attraction, um, job attraction, and all of those things are really underpinned by our database. And our database needs to have the correct data in it. Little kind of anecdote, um, if your data is not good, your marketing will be good, and vice versa. So what we're going to look at first is what we call web forms within Tracker. Now, web forms are our built-in online forms that we can send out to contacts, clients candidates, leads, or even companies. This enables us to capture new data as well as update current data. Now, some of you might be saying, what on earth does this have to do with sales and marketing? Well, in order to make sure we can get those fantastic looking and well-targeted campaigns out to the relevant people, we have to make sure we have the right information for those people. So we're gonna do that firstly by looking at web forms. So we're on the tracker platform at the moment, and this is our startup screen, and we're just going to go into the tools and settings area. Within the tools and settings area, we're then going to move into web form. And I'm just going to load up a little example, and then we can talk a little bit about how, how capturing the right data helps your marketing. So we all work within the recruitment space. Some of you will have more developed databases than others, and a lot of you will have data on your system, which is frankly useless or not up to the standard that we need to be able to send out marketing campaigns to. Web forms are built into Tracker. So what we are able to do is capture information, whether that is at the start of our onboarding process, or it could be updating that data as with contacts and candidate alike. So web forms built into the platform can be embedded into email templates and email sequences. And remember that email sequences bit because we're going to come back to it a little bit later on in the call. So if we move down, it's a standard web form. Now, crucially, web forms are fully customizable for all clients and there are no additional costs for the amount of forms or level of customization that you wish to um, input into the form. Now, the example that we have here is just a basic candidate registration form that we have created. Now, in today's challenging recruitment market, your brand, how you inter your brand alongside how you interact with candidates is what might set you apart from the competition. So something as basic as a candidate onboarding form, which will ask the candidate to go and populate that information for you, will make sure not only can you get the right roles out to them in those mass mail shops, we're going to look at a little bit further on in the call, but will also enable you to then keep constant, constant contact with them through the correct, for instance, 
um, CV that you have formed, the correct skills, the correct geographical location. So although the call today is centered around marketing and how we approach that, we always have to think, do we have the right data? Do we have the right information in the system in order to get that information out to the relevant parties? And web forms are a great, great way for us to be able to capture that. If we move down, you can see that we are able to have vital information that allows us to create targeted campaigns. So the example here that I'm going to use is languages. Now, from my work within the client success team here in the UK, we often um, work with UK recruiters who are recruiting in a European market. Sometimes they might require those European languages. And through making sure that we capture the example given languages at the point of onboarding, it means that we can put together sequences and campaigns that hit those candidates with the skills that we are looking for. Now that's brilliant for candidates. We're getting the data and we're ensuring that when we onboard them, we have the correct information. But what about our existing database and that data? An ex-recruiter myself, a lot of the time, we want the fresh shiny toy straight out the box and we want that candidate that's just hit the market. When in fact, a lot of us have databases that are full of brilliant candidates that we may not have engaged with or maybe don't have the correct information for. So in order to re-engage our database from a candidate perspective, we're also able to send out web forms to update information. Again, another great way to make sure we have the right information on a candidate record captured through web forms via your CRM ATS to make sure we can then pinpoint the correct marketing material we're going to aim at them. We've all got them, particularly those of us that have been around business or even in our personal lives where you get an email from a company and it is nothing to do with anything you've ever signed up to or anything um, that you are interested in. Remember recruitment, exactly the same. We don't want to be sending people jobs in areas or departments or specialities that they haven't registered an interest with. By sending out web forms throughout the journey with candidates, we can get those updated details and allow us to really target them when we are putting together our marketing material. So that's candidates, whether we are onboarding them or whether they are currently with us. But what about clients? Now, this is an interesting topic that I've been discussing with some of my clients recently. How do you make sure you have the right information for clients? Now, this may seem really odd because in recruitment, we often feel like we are meant to work with the client, but sometimes they can also be the ones that drive um, that relationship. But it's always important to make sure we have the right information for our clients. So I'm just going to show you another web form that I created for this call. Contact. Now you can see very, very similar setup in terms of the web form, but we are looking to capture contact information. So the first name, the surname, email, job title, and manager. Now I've got clients that are using this really successfully at the moment in order to gather information for clients that they're currently working with. So for instance, you're working with a client and you want to ensure that you have their manager's name. What about if that individual leaves? What about if you can't get hold of them? But what we can also do is by gathering that manager's information, it gives us another reference point to be able to send out that material. What your contact might be interested in may not be what their manager or, or someone else within their business is interested in. So the same as we have with candidates, we can capture contact information at any point, whether that is when we are onboarding them or afterwards when we're just looking to make sure that we have those details going forward. Again, another example would be we often want to look for new business and drive towards new opportunities. However, if we have the relevant information for contacts, the right email address, the right name, the right job title, when we are sending out marketing material through our CRM ATS, in, in this case tracker, we can target the correct job titles because we've already got them to give us that information and web forms are a great way for us to do that. So just to round off web forms, before we can really look at how we approach marketing, whether that's through the campaigner that we're going to look at in a moment or through the sequencer, we have to make sure that we have the right data and we can do that by using web forms. Little bit of a, of a webinar exclusive. We've also highlighted how important it is to use web forms for data capture, but what about data enrichment? 
Well, currently we are working um, on data management services here at Cracker and a way that we are able to upgrade your data. Do keep an eye out for future marketing material that we'll be putting out on that or contact your client success representative. Okay, so let's imagine we're in an ideal world and we have got all the great data that we need from our candidates and contacts. We've enriched it. We've made sure we have all of the correct information for them. However, what we now want to do is we want to be able to send out a mass mail shop. So in terms of tracker, I'm just going to navigate back to our starter page. I'll talk to you a little bit about what campaigns are. Now, quite often, when you are looking at your tech stack, you may look at your core system, so that could be tracker for those of you that are clients. But then you will also have additional softwares that allow you to, for instance, do your marketing. And that could be a market marketing specific platform. Now, although they do have great features, what Tracker gives you is it gives you an embedded embedded marketing tool into, into the platform that interacts with your data, but crucially also feeds the results back into the system. A theme of the next kind of 10, 15 minutes or so that we're going to explore is how many clients don't use the data off the back of their marketing campaign in order to shape future outreach and future development. So the campaigner, left-hand side here, we are then just going to go into campaign. Now the current tracker system on it is one of my demo systems. So we may look like a little bit of a mess, but we do have some great information in here. So what we're going to do is we are going to go into a campaign and we're going to talk about how we approach particular clients and particular contacts. And again, a brief little summary of what our campaigner is. So that is our mass mail shot tool. So what we are looking to do is send a, for instance, opening email to 500 candidates or 500 contacts that have been introduced uh, to the system in the last couple of months. Alternatively, something as basic as a Christmas card. So I'm going to start by just going and grabbing a campaign that I made earlier. And then just opening this up so we can have a look. So when we are looking to send out marketing material, it's really important to make sure we think about how we approach that particular um, group that we are looking to target, whether, again, that is a company, a contact, or a candidate. Through Tracker, we have given you three different ways that you can create that marketing material. We have just standard emails, so ones that look like you've popped into your Outlook or your Gmail, and you have just put together a very, very standard email. Now, for some markets and some industries, this is a great way to be able to approach people. However, Tracker, we understand that different markets and different business needs may require a different approach when it comes to your marketing. So what we are able to do is create standard ones. You can see here, very plain, very basic. Hopefully you guys can create something a little bit more imaginative than that. However, we do also have what we call our builder. So you are able to create fully fancy looking campaigns so you were able to drag and drop different parts of the campaigner and uh, different parts of the email builder in to create i'm not going to spend too much on that today because i wouldn't want to make you all laugh with uh, how artistic i am but we are able to put them together through our email builder and for those of you that are busy or don't have a dedicated marketing function we've got you guys covered as well so through that we also have our templates our templates are designed for you to get information out there quickly without having to worry about any of the marketing material. Now, the three ways that I've just outlined there are important because, as I mentioned, different markets may require you to target them in different ways. For instance, if it's a candidate outreach you're looking to do, we might say what we want is we want something that is a lot more representative of our brand with images, with social media links. However, if it is a form of uh, business development, we might want something that's a little bit more formal in order to make sure that approach is the right way. So that's how we can create content, three different ways. But within Tracker, because our marketing function is built into the platform, what we can do is we can decide who we want to send that to. Now, our send lists are our targeted lists. Now, what that allows us to do is create type lists based off criteria across, across uh, contact and candidate records. 
So, for instance, we could build a list that says I'm looking for all candidates that are active based in Nottingham, UK, and that have a language of English and have an engineering skill. Now, by building those lists and by making that part of the process that your consultants or your marketing teams are used to, what it enables you to do is make sure that marketing material is hitting the right people with the right skill sets. I'm not going to go into how we create those lists today because that is very much a training call exercise. But if you are a tracker client, I really do recommend um, speaking to your representative in order to understand exactly how you can utilize those lists and how you can use them to benefit your marketing material. Now, if you remember at the start of the call, we spoke about data and how important making sure we have the right data on records is. I'm going to keep coming back to that as a point throughout this call, and this is the first time we're going to come back to it. If we have the right information, so if we've captured the right information, whether it is on onboarding or whether it's through that data enrichment of asking people to update those details, it allows us to make sure those lists are a lot more focused. So we have the right locations, the right skills, something as basic as just the right name. I got an email from a um, platform a couple of days ago where they used my second name as my first name. Now, that was their first impression. It didn't come across great. What we don't want is having the wrong information on tracker records and sending that out. So data enrichment, really important for creating those lists and really important for making sure we can personalize those emails as well. One quick little feature that I'm going to mention as well is just our scheduler. Now, this may seem like a basic thing that you can do in terms of marketing. There is tons and tons of research out there. I recommend you go and have a snoop around on LinkedIn. I'm sure you can find articles about what dates and what times you should send particular campaigns. For instance, I was reading an article a couple of days ago that mentioned you're not meant to actually send things bang on the hour because it looks automated. You know, three minutes past is meant to be something which looks less automated. Now, some of you might be sat there chuckling or thinking, is that necessarily true? Well, the truth is, I don't think anyone really knows. It depends on the person that opens that particular correspondence. However, what we can do through Tracker is we can let you send it when you want and what time you want. You tell us when you want it to send, which again is brilliant for things like weekend emails or a specific time. Do you want it to be sent after seven o'clock because people are more likely to be on their personal emails? So to summarize with the campaigner, we can create three different types of personalized campaigns, send it to a targeted list through our enriched data with our web forms, and then schedule it for whenever we want to send. Now, to round off campaigns, what I just want to talk about is something that a lot of companies don't focus on when we have conversations with them here at Track Lab, but something that we try and encourage all clients to use. Now, if I just go into the campaign that I have saved here, you can see that we actually have a results column. So if I was just to click into the results here, so you can start to have a look as I speak. 50% accurate tracker, what we are able to do is track certain interactions with that particular email. So for instance, you can see here we have successful send, unsuccessful send, unopened, bounce back, open only. So through, through the results that you are given, what you are then able to do is shape how you then approach the next phase of that marketing. Marketing is a continual process, particularly when we're talking about business development. A great success story I have with client, uh, a client that I've been working with recently is, for instance, the open domain. Now, if I select open domain within the platform, you can see that we are given the options down here. What we're able to do is we can bulk action. So, for instance, we could send them all an email or we could start them on another sequence. Or, alternatively, we could have said that's enough of email marketing. I want someone to physically pick up the phone and ring these people. And it is a great way to spot conversation. You know, for instance, if we were um, to ring uh, Francis, one of our examples that we have here, you can see that Francis has opened that email one or two times already. If I just select the right hand side. That can be a great conversation starter for the fact that they've already opened and already um, interacted with our campaign. When we are working with clients at Tracker, we always suggest running all of your campaigns through the platform because that's how we can get these results and, again, shape our future approach. So, campaign. We put that to a side for one second. That is our massive shot. We have multiple different ways that we can create, several different ways that we can send. 
and then also how we practically use it back. The last area that we're going to look at is we are going to look at our sequencer. My favorite part of the system and a lot of clients that I work with favorite part of the system as well. In recruitment, time is money. The more time you can spend speaking to candidates and prospects and current clients alike, probably over the phone or processing current positions that you have, the more time and um, the less time you have to spend on admin, etc. And the sequencer will take a huge part of that away. So I'm just going to go into our sequences area. And I'm just going to grab a sequence that I created earlier. Just go back in here. There we go, second time looking. So if we just open the boss sequence. There we go. Perfect. So, sequences. The campaign that we just looked at is our mass mail shot tool. Now, for some marketing approaches, mass mail shots are perfect because we just want to send one email out to a large audience with maybe one message. What the sequencer allows us to do is allow us to say, well, in fact, we don't just want to send one email. We want to send a series of emails and we want to cater that um, email chain based on how people react and reply to that particular email. So the sequencer, not going to go through the functionality in terms of the ins and outs of it. As mentioned, please do contact your sales or um, uh, your support or your success rep for more information on that. But what I am going to do is just give you a little sneak peek at the templates. So if we just go into the steps, the example that I have here is we have a new job lead cold prospect sequence. So we can send our opening email out and say to that, um, send that email out and personalize it to say to that particular um, contact that we may or may not have worked with. How are you doing? Markets are tough at the moment. Do you want to have a chat with us? Now, crucially, if they don't interact with us, if we were to go down and they don't interact with our stop trigger, so for instance, they don't send a positive or negative email reply, we're then going to go into step two, which is going to follow up. So it's going to be a, hey, contact. Earlier this week, I dropped you an email regarding recruitment. What is the best way to follow this up and have a chat? So we pause there. Now we've got a little bit of grasp in terms of the functionality. So we can send one email. If they don't interact, we can send another email. Now, how does this benefit us in our marketing approach? By creating templates that are very, very market specific and for instance, whether that is a contact or a candidate, it allows us to run things in the background as we are doing our day-to-day um, -day job. So for instance, we are able to have a business development sequence running for a new market that we're looking to try and break into, reaching out to information, reaching out to contacts that we already have on the system. Again, very similar to campaigns, through being able to personalize that approach, whether it is through a standard looking email or those report, uh, all those fancy looking templates that I mentioned earlier, we can then craft that in order to fit the target market that we are um, looking to reach. Now, you can add as many different steps as you want, and you can have as many different types of emails as you want in terms of you could have some that are very um, fancy looking, like I mentioned with the templates, or you can have standard looking email ones that we have here. A bit of a um, loop back to the start of the call where we were talking about data. The sequencer and the campaigner are brilliant because they allow us to do marketing work that is proactive as well as reactive. And through using the tool that we've described, we can really make sure we're hitting the right people. However, a common mistake that we find with um, tracker clients um, when they first come to the platform is they're not utilizing data and data changes to impact their marketing. So a really cool little feature that we have built, built into the sequencer is we have what we call a workflow step. Now, workflow step, you can see, doesn't have an email. That's because we're not looking to send an email. We are looking to directly impact our data 
from the back of our marketing communications. So let's say I send this to a contact and they go through email one, two, and three. And you can see we've sent them an opening email. We've sent them a follow-up email. We've sent them a third email to say, you know, you're obviously not interested in speaking to us. So off the back of that, if we're a workflow step, what we can actually do is do things like update the lead status to cold. I've sent them three emails in a week or three emails in three months, depending on the timings that we set. They might not be interested, in which case that lead is cold. And we don't want to spend too much time chasing, chasing our tails, going after things which might not end up coming to fruition. Again, what we are able to do underneath our workflow is we can actually react as well. If you remember earlier, I was talking about within campaigns, we're able to create targeted lists. Now, off the back of the sequence, we can actually add people to those targeted lists. So we could have a list that is specifically contacts or candidates that haven't reacted with our sequence. Some great examples of where current clients are using the sequencer effectively at the moment. Candidate onboarding, making sure that we have those chasers to make sure people are sending us up-to-date CVs, compliance items, any um, before start date documentation that you may need. Business development, again, allowing it to run in the background while we try and develop, uh, while we work on the current relationships and roles that we have. And then finally, and one that is really beginning to take shape, particularly as we move into a market, particularly in the UK, especially, which is very, very much job light at the moment, but very, very candidate rich. You can actually perform follow-ups with clients and candidates to make sure there is no ways that you can improve your process. So feedback, essentially, and that allows us to then shape how we would then approach future marketing. Now, I'm just going to load back to our main traffic screen, just for like we kind of have a couple of, a couple of minutes just to be included. So we started upon by looking at web forms and how we can capture data initially or ongoing. And why is that so important? Well, hopefully by now you understand that by capturing the, the relevant data and updating the relevant data, it gives us the platform to be able to perform effectively within our marketing. We then looked at campaigns and we've said, OK, well, we may need to approach different clients in different ways. That's OK. We can do that through the three different types of email that we can create. And also we can make it work in terms of dates and times for our particular market. For instance, you may have a market where it is senior heavy in terms of the roles you recruit for. Emails on weekends might be more effective. And then we've ended with our sequencer, which allows us to do our day to day while also running in the background, reaching out to those candidates that have onboarded with us recently, or those new markets we're looking to break into. If you have enjoyed or have you, are you interested in any of the features um, that have been highlighted today, the first step, if you are lucky enough to be a tracker client, is to reach out to the support team or the success team. This is something that we work on with clients day in, day out, in order to make sure and um, they're using it most effectively. If you're not a tracker client and you are interested in seeing a little bit more, please do feel free to um, connect with me on LinkedIn. I'll be more than happy to put you in touch with one of our sales reps. If you have any questions off the back of today's seminar in terms of things which you want me to clarify or anything you would like a little bit more advice or guidance on, I'm always open to answering messages from clients as well. Thank you for the time today, everyone. Appreciate it. Um, you will be sent a recording of this call as well, so you can hear back anything that you feel like you may need to go over or miss. As I said, if anyone has any questions or anything going forward, reach out to your support or sales rep, or I will be available on LinkedIn. Okay, everyone, really appreciate the time. For those of you that is morning, good luck with the rest of the day. For those of you that are lucky enough, it is the afternoon. Have a good rest of your afternoon, and I look forward to seeing how you will get on with marketing moving forward.